Hi, I'm Sue King, archivist at Morrison Reeves Library and the board of the Wayne County Historical Museum. I'm out here at Earlham Cemetery on a gorgeous, warm, sunny, uh, beautiful colors kind of a day in October, which would be perfect for Tales from the Departed. Unfortunately, it's 2020 and nothing goes according to plan. We didn't want to let the centennial of women's suffrage go by completely unnoticed, so we are going to do the next best thing, a virtual Tales from the Departed. We know it's not the best, but under the circumstances, it's about all we can do. So I hope you enjoy these, uh, these short little videos that we're going to post, and hopefully we'll be able to meet back here in the cemetery next year. Thanks. Hello, my name is Mary Thistlethwaite Birdsall. I was born Mary Bain Thistlethwaite in Chester County, Pennsylvania in 1828. My parents came there from Yorkshire the year before I was born, and the year after I was born, they relocated to Richmond, Indiana. My parents joined the Hicksites when there was a Hicksite separation in the 1820s, so I grew up going to the Hicksite schools and attending the Hicksite meeting. In 1848, I married Thomas Birdsall, who was a native of Maryland, but he was living in Clinton County, Ohio, and he too was a Hicksite Quaker. I moved to Clinton County with him after our marriage, so I missed the women's convention at Dublin in 1851 because I was still living in Clinton County with my husband and children. But we had moved back to Richmond by 1852 and so I was elected secretary of the second women's convention. We, um, we came up with a lot of ideas there and it was my job to record all of that and to uh, develop ideas that could be presented to the public. One of the ideas we said was that all women are entitled to the same natural rights as men. And the arguments against women as being the weaker sex were based totally on tradition and not on anything that could be proven. And that the qualifications for citizenship should be based on mental and moral attributes, not on anything else. In 1854, I became the editor of a magazine. It was called The Lily, and it had been founded in Rochester, New York by a woman named Amelia Jinks Bloomer. You've probably heard of her. She was a women's rights advocate, but she was also into costume reform. And so she wore these short little dresses with lousy trousers underneath them that became known as bloomer skirts. Well, she wanted to give up editing the Lily, and we went back and forth a bit, and finally she agreed to transfer the production of the Lily to Richmond, Indiana, and I became the editor. I did do, I think, a fairly good job, although Amelia didn't always agree with that, but I did get the circulation up to 3,000 before I gave it up in 1858. In 1859, I had what was probably my biggest moment in the women's rights movement. Dr. Mary Thomas and Agnes Cook and I took a petition to Indianapolis to the legislature. It had over a thousand signatures, so that was a whole lot of paper that we had to take over to Indianapolis. But we presented it to the legislature with two requests. One, that they give women equal property rights with men. Because if you were a married woman, you had a great deal of difficulty owning your own property, and sometimes women were taken advantage of. And the other thing we ask is that they start the process for amending the U.S. Constitution to include an amendment that would give women the right to vote. Of course, that didn't happen in my lifetime, unfortunately, but we hope we got the ball rolling. In my later years, I went with my husband to live in Philadelphia. Our son, William Wilfred, uh, was the president of Swarthmore College and gained some renown as an educator. 
and we spent the last years of our life living with William. But when we died, William made sure that our remains came back to Richmond to be buried.